two sections to cover today. I'm hoping that we can get through them both. Um, I think we can, especially since we have the whole like hour and pretty much 50 minutes, right? Um, I think we can get there. So the thing about 5.4 is it's all about solving equations, okay? And there are two different techniques to solving these equations. And so that's where there's gonna be a bit of an issue because I like to do it one way, but yet the computer will do it another way. So if you go click on those solutions or those hints or those guides while you're doing the homework, the way they do it is gonna look a lot different than the way that I do it, okay? So because of that, I do want to expose you to both types, okay? So for a few of the problems, I am gonna do it my way, but then I'm also gonna do those same problems their way, okay? And then that way you can see that you, it doesn't matter which way, but I want you truly to choose one and go with it that way, okay? So you either choose to use their technique or you choose to use my technique, okay? And the reason why I want you to make that decision is because what happens is that people confuse the two and then they start doing things that they're not supposed to do, okay? And so I don't want you to confuse the two. And that's usually why I stay away from the other kind of solution but I want you to understand what the computer is trying to tell you whenever you click on it, okay? So I want you to have some exposure to what they're doing, okay? So literally the whole section is just all about solving exponential and logarithmic equations, solving some complicated exponential equations, solving some complicated logarithms, and then eventually using those equations to solve word problems, right? Um, that's essentially all we're doing in this section. So I'm gonna push this paper up. It's a lot of writing. So if you're writing notes, you might wanna write it down. But I'm going to explain to you the way I do it and then the way they do it, okay? So for me, if I cover this up, okay, this is my technique. I don't, I don't know how to cover that up, but <laughs> this is my technique. So what you do is you look at the equation that you have and you check to see if you have two exponents, like one on each side, okay? So if you have two expressions that are exponential expressions on each side, then you're going to use that one-to-one -one property that tells you you only have to worry about the exponents being the same, right? You remember that rule from that section? Then if you only have one exponential expression and just some other number right here, then you would have to use the definition of the logs to convert it over to a logarithm expression, okay? And then hopefully you'd be able to solve it that way, okay? If you have two logs, then you can use the one-to-one -one property for logs, right? If the log and the base is the same, then you just set the two arguments equal to each other. And then finally, the last situation that you'll see is if you have one log and then it's equal to a number, in this case, you have to use the definition to switch over to exponential form. And then hopefully it looks like something you can solve, okay? So this is the technique that I do. I basically look to see if I have one exponential expression, um, in the whole equation, or if I have two, one on each side, if I have two logs, one on each side, or if I just have one log and then a number. So this is my technique of what I do, okay? Now, the way they do it is, regardless of how many exponentials you have, if it's two or one, what they do is they apply the log with that same base on both sides. Again, I will show you what that means when we get to an actual problem, okay? And for these two, if they see logs anywhere in the problem, what they do is they take A raised to that both sides of the equation. Again, I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. So their method may be better in a way that like, if you have an exponential at all, you know what to do, right? And if you have a logarithm at all, then you know what to do, okay? So I am gonna show you both, but again, this is the one that I usually go with, okay? Now, there's two notes that you need to be aware of. Well, I can only fit one here. One note is that um, if only one exponential or log, then be sure to isolate it before applying any of these rules. So if you just have one exponential, notice that there's no number in the front of this exponential. I'm not adding or subtracting anything to this exponential, right? So before I can apply that uh, definition, I have to get that exponential by itself. The same thing with this logarithmic expression. It's just one log all by itself. It doesn't have any exponents. It doesn't have any coefficients. It doesn't have any uh, other terms that I need to add or subtract. 
it's the log expression all by itself. Okay, and so you must get it by itself before you can use the definition. Okay, and that goes for whether you're using my method or their method. You have to get the one log or the one exponential all alone. Okay, before doing anything. The next note that I have is this one here. It says if multiple logs are involved, right? You've got log, 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 a whole bunch of them, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna look at one of the sides and combine it into one log. Remember, we showed you how to do that the last class. And then you would go to the right-hand side and combine that into one log if it's not just one log. Once you have one log and one log, then you can go from there, okay? So those are the two, two notes. Make sure you isolate and then make sure you combine. So I have two uh, conditions here. See how there's two logs, but they're on the same side, right? So because there's two logs on the same side, I had to use that property that when I'm adding two separate logs, I just need to multiply their arguments, right? And then the two is still the two. And then from there, I can use the definition or I can use the exponential. Why would I use the exponential? Because aren't exponentials inverses of logs, right? They get rid of logs. So exponentials get rid of logs and logs get rid of exponentials, okay? Then this is another example. Look, I have multiple logs on the left side and I have multiple logs on the right side, right? But I can combine these two because of the plus, I can multiply the two arguments and I can combine these two because of the minus, it's the top, the first guy goes on the top and the last guy goes at the bottom. Okay, once you have one log and one log, then you can go from there. In this case, I would have to use the one to one property. Okay, we're going to have a whole bunch, a whole bunch, there's a lot. So we're going to see how all these work out in all the different scenarios. Okay, so I'm going to start going through this. Now, I'm going to do these two problems two different ways, just so you can see how I do it. You can see how the book does it, and then you make your decision. Okay. You will not be counted wrong if you do not choose my, if you choose the book's way and you like that, as long as you're doing it correctly, you will get all your points on the, on the test, okay? You do not need to do it the way I like. <laughs> so the first one is if I have this equation, notice that they are two exponentials, right? And they have um, the same base, right? What is the base for both of those exponentials? E. Mm -hmm. So if E is the same, the base is the same, then I use the one-to-one -one property, which tells me that this exponent has to equal this exponent. And then from there, you just solve whatever kind of equation that is, right? This one happens to be a quadratic, so I'm going to have to get it equal to zero and then factor it and then set each factor equal to zero, right? That's how we solve quadratics. Or if I can't factor, I use the formula, right? But this is negative. I don't like my x squared guy negative, right? So I'm going to actually add x squared to both sides so that he's not negative. And I will get that zero at the same time. And then this one's not too bad to factor. So x minus 4 and x plus 1, that will work. And so then I get my two solutions. I will get what as my two solutions? 4 and minus 1. Good. And then remember with these, oh, no, these I don't have to check. I don't have to check when they have exponentials. I do have to check when they have logs, right? Because those numbers cannot make the arguments of the logs negative. So be careful. With these, you don't have to check. You're good. Exponentials, no checking involved, necessary. They're both going to work. You're not, there's no way. They just don't happen like the logs do. Okay, now we're going to solve this same exact expression the same equation, okay? But this time we're gonna do what they do. And what they do is, is anytime they see logs, I mean, E exponentials at all, whether it's an E base or a two base or a five base, they don't care. If they see an exponential expression, what they immediately do is they take the log on both sides. But that log has to have the same base as the base that's there. And it's because in order for them to cancel each other, they have to have that same base. I don't know if you remember, but there was a rule like this. Oops, oops. And I told you that if this base is the same and that base is the same, then they undo each other, right? And you just get whatever's up there at the top, 
Okay. So whatever this exponential base is, you're going to take a log with that same base. Okay. So in this case, since my base is on both sides are E, I'm going to take log base E on both sides. And instead of writing log base E, someone might have also just written, written LN. It's the same thing. Okay. So if you wrote this, you're not going to get penalized because it's the exact same thing. Okay. Now we know that log base E and the E are going to wipe each other out, aren't they? Just like LN and E are going to wipe each other out because LN is log base E, right? So what that means is I end up with negative X squared equal to negative three X minus four. And isn't that the exact same thing that I had up here, right? I had negative X squared equal to negative three X minus four the other time I did it, right? So it will give you the same solution. I don't need to do this again, right? <laughs> you know what the steps are, okay? So theirs might be a little bit more writing, right, than mine, but the nice thing about theirs is if they see an exponential, they already know apply log. And if they see logs, they already know apply exponentials, okay? That's the nice thing about theirs. The nice thing about mine is there's less writing, okay? But both will get the job done. So for part B, that's this one. I want to do that problem two different ways, okay? So ignore this stuff. I'm gonna write the problem here. Now this is an exponential problem, right? Um, but I cannot either, I cannot do it this way or that way. I cannot do it either way until that exponential piece is completely isolated, which means I have to get rid of that three coefficient there. And how do you get rid of a coefficient? Not distribute, but if I had three X equal to 42, how would I solve that? I would divide by three, right? So if I wanna get rid of this three times that, I need to divide by three. And so I get this little exponential thing, and I think that's 14, but you might wanna verify. Let's see, sometimes my brain does weird things. Okay, good, okay. And now that it's by itself, I can do whatever I wanna do with it. So even if I were doing it this method, I would still have to have that same first step. This, I, this exponential thing has to be by itself before I can continue, okay? Now over here, I'm gonna apply the definition. So over here, I'm basically gonna change this form from exponential form to log form, okay? And when I do that, I'm gonna write log, and then I'm gonna have the same base as this equation. And what base is that? Two. Mm -hmm. And then instead of having the X on the same side as two, the 14 is going to be on the same side as two. And then the X gets kicked away, right? And now look, I already have X all by itself, don't I? So if they wanted the exact answer, this is the exact answer. If they want the decimal answer, can I stick that in the calculator? Like that? No. Can I fix this so that I can stick it in my calculator? Yes. Mm -hmm. We learned that trick that said you can do LN of 14 over LN of two, and then you can put that in your calculator, right? So then what do we get? We get X is approximately, what? Fraction, LN, where's my LN button? There it is. And so I get, if I round it to just one place, it's going to be 3.8. So about 3.8. If they want you to round to more decimal places, like four, that three is not going to, actually the one, two, three, four, the five will change that to a four. So it would be this. Okay. So just pay attention to what decimal they want you to round it to when you go into WebAssign, or if they want the exact answer. 
If they want the exact answer, enter this, okay? Okay, now let's try the same problem, but using the way they do it. So they see the exponential and they isolate it. And then after they isolate it, they apply log on both sides because we know the opposite or the inverse of an exponential is a log. All you have to do is make sure that the log that you apply has the exact same base as your exponential. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna do log base two of the left-hand side and then you're gonna do log base two of the right-hand side. Whatever you do, you have to do to both sides, okay? It's like applying the square root, right? It's a, you're applying a function to both sides, okay? Now here, the bases and the bases match, so we know they'll cancel each other out, and I'll just have x, and we have the same thing we had before, which I can convert and stick in my calculator, right? And so in both cases, you get the exact same answer, okay? So I just want you to be aware that the computer will most likely show you these steps, but there is another way for doing it another way. And honestly, as I was looking at them, at the solutions, there's a couple of them that like toggled back and forth between my way and their way. So it's just weird. It's good to, okay? Especially if you get used to one way and then you're just like, I'm at a block here and I can't continue. Then now you have another one to try, right? There's a whole bunch more. <laughs> so that's not the end of it, okay? Um, let's see here. Let's look at these. So they've done it one way already. This was the equation that they were given and they solved it their way. So they saw a log and to undo a log, you need an exponential, okay? This, when it says ln. Not zero, not one, it's not 10, it's e. Who's saying e? Who's saying e? Frederick, you're saying e? Yay, good job. Okay. Um, so yes, log by itself, that's when this is a 10. When you have LN, the little base here is an E, okay? By definition, the base cannot be zero and it cannot be one. The base always has to be greater than one, okay? So be careful there. That base will always be a number bigger than one. So it definitely won't be one and it definitely won't be zero, okay? Okay, so since that has a base E, then that means that the exponential function that I'm gonna apply to both sides is going to be E. So we're gonna take E of the left-hand side and E of the right-hand side, okay? And we already know that if this guy's base and that base match, then they undo each other. And so you just get the X all by itself and then this E squared. Now this is the exact answer, but if they ask you for the decimal answer, then just plug it in your calculator. So E with the two power is about 7.3891 because the five will convert that to a one. Okay. Now that's their way, right? That's that they saw log and they applied the exponential to undo it. I can also solve this by rewriting ln as log base e and then using the definition. If I rewrite it as an exponential, the base stays the base, but instead of an x, I'm going to have the two and then the x gets kicked over to the other side. I notice that I have the exact same thing as an answer as we did on the first try, right? So either way you do it works, okay? So see on this one, they did it my way. <laughs> I'm telling you, they toggle back and forth between which way they wanna do it, okay? So one way to do it is to apply that one-to-one -one property. You see a log on this side, one log on this side, one log on that side. They both have the same base. So the only way this whole expression can be the same as this whole expression is if that argument is the exact same thing as that argument, 
right? And so then if you solve this, you have the minus X on both sides. So you end up with four X and then you have to add one to the other side. So you get eight. And then if you divide by four, you get the answer that they have here, right? Okay, but it takes a little bit. They kind of skipped a step, right? Um, and so it's great, you get your answer. Now you have to check your answers though with the logs. So if I plug this back in here, will I get a negative inside here? If I plug two inside here, this argument, do I get a negative? I get positive nine, right? So that's okay. And if I plug two in here, do I get a negative? I also get positive nine, right? So then this one's good. You just have to make sure it doesn't make those arguments negative. This answer could be negative. The number itself as a solution can be negative. I don't want you to think that I get a negative number as my answer that immediately it's wrong. That is not true. What you need to be checking is if after you plug it in that it's a negative, okay? Because that is a misunderstanding that I'll see on a test is that someone will get a negative at solution and they'll be like, oh, it's negative, X can't be negative. No, X can be negative. It's just the arguments cannot be negative, okay? Especially if this had a square, right? Then it probably won't be negative, even though the number is negative. Okay, the other way to do it is what was their way, but then all of a sudden they switched on us, is if there's logs to do the inverse of a log, which is an exponential. Right, so then that means take the same base three and then raise both sides to that three exponent. So three and then log three. So notice my notation. What was in the equation has now become exponents, right? And you have three as the base. But we already know that if this base and this base match, they undo each other. And you get this. This base and this base match, they go away and then you end up just with the x plus seven. And now I have the exact same thing that I had before. And so I would have to go through those steps again, okay? So yes, there's positives and negatives for both, right? Whether you're doing it my way or their way. My way is shorter, but their way is more intuitive. Because if you see a log, you apply an exponential. If you see an exponential, you apply a log, okay? Now, how do we put that in our um, word problems? So here, this one says, the first word problem we've gotten, it says you invest $500. So because I'm investing $500, that's my P. At an annual interest rate, there's my rate. So my R is, and I cannot type in a percentage. So I have to move it over twice. I get 0 0.0675. And then compounded continuously, which means I have to use this formula and not the other one. You will have both formulas, okay? The only thing you won't have is me telling you what N is in the other formula. The other formula looks like this, right? All I'll say is N equals the number of times compounded in a year. What I won't tell you is that monthly means N should equal 12 and that quarterly means N should equal four and annually tells you that N should equal one, right? That you will have to know, okay? So if it says quarterly, plug in four for it. It says monthly, plug in 12 for it, right? Okay. So I'm basically gonna plug in everything, but it, oh no, it says, how long will it take for your money to double? So they want my money to double. What this means is that the amount afterward, my balance should be twice what I put in, right? So when I go to use this formula, I'm actually gonna plug in 2P for A, and then from there, I'm going to plug in all my variables. So P was 500. 
R was 0 0.0675 and T, I don't know T, that's still my unknown. It's asking me how long, right? So that's the one that I need to solve for. And we know with an equation like this, I can multiply that, that's not a big deal. But what kind of equation is this? Is it a log equation or an exponential equation? Mm -hmm. And when they're exponentials, you have to have the exponential piece all alone, okay? So this part right here needs to be completely by itself before I can keep going, okay? So that means I need to get rid of this 500. How am I gonna get rid of that 500? Mm -hmm. It's multiplied, so I gotta divide. And then 1,000 divided by 500 is two. And depending on which method you're using, there's two different things to do. There's take the LN on both sides or use the definition to swap it over, okay? Either case, you're gonna get the same thing. So I'm gonna split this and do it both ways. So LN of two, LN of E with this decimal. And then the other one is to use a definition. So I would have log with this base, the two, and then the 0 0.0675T gets kicked onto the other side. So this one's using the definition. What's the definition? Okay, that definition. The one that tells me that that's the same form as this form, right? So notice I had my number, I had my base, and I had my exponent. So whatever the base is, which happens to be E, becomes the base of the log. That exponent of the E comes to the other side. And then that two that I had over by itself becomes my argument. Isn't that what I have here? Okay. And so then over here, the LN and the E cancel each other. So you get LN of two equal to 0 0.0675 T. What is this log base E? Isn't that LN, right? So don't I have the exact same thing again, right? So it doesn't matter which method you're using, whether you're using the definition or you're applying LN on both sides. Both methods will get you to the same place, okay? And then from there, I just have to divide by the 0 0.0675, right? And then type it in my calculator. So I would get that, if I divide by this, I would get LN of two over 0 0.0675 equal to T. If they want the exact answer, that's it, right? But if they want the decimal, then let's stick it in our calculator. Clear fraction, LN of two at the top, and then the 0 0.0675 at the bottom. And it's years, so it'll take about 10.3 years. That six will round this two up, right? That's about six, 10.3 years. Sometimes they'll just say round to the nearest year. And so you just round. Okay, I'm sure there's more. Yep, there's another one. And then we got some practices. Oh no, they're just graphing it. It's the same problem. They just take five pages to solve it. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I just, they like to space everything out. So here we go. We've got five, five practice problems, and then we'll get into 5.5. So all solving equations. And the solving equations isn't going to go away when we get to that section either. It's just, we're finally going to get to that growth and decay stuff I told you about, right? about the mummies and the bacteria. Basically what my brain thinks of when I see <laughs> exponentials. Okay, so what kind of equation is number one? Is it a log equation or an exponential equation?
it's an exponential. And so I have two options. I can either, well, I, not if, okay. If it's an exponential, I have to ask myself, is it one exponential or two exponentials? Do I have just one exponential on one side or do I have one on one side and one on the other side? Just one on one side, yes. So then I have one, I have two choices. I can either use the definition or I can apply the log. But when I apply the log, it has to have the exact same base as this exponential. And what base is that? One half. So I have two choices, okay? You can use either one, I have two choices. Which one do you wanna do for this problem? Option one or option two? If you want to do option one, raise your hand. Okay, if you want to do option two, raise your hand. Nobody raise your hand, so <laughs> we're gonna do option one then. So if I use the definition, remember it's turning into a log and my base should stay the same, right? So what should my base be then here? One half. Then I'm gonna have an argument and something over here. Who's gonna go in the parentheses and who's gonna get kicked out? X gets kicked out because the X was attached to the one half before, right? And now it's changing. So the X should not be over there with the one half anymore, okay? Which means the four has got to go in there, right? And can I type that in my calculator? Yes, but I got to fix it first, right? So we're going to fix it. We're going to do LN of the argument over LN of the base, okay? And then I should be able to type it in my calculator. And I'm just going to put little squigglies over here and type it in. So ln of 4 over ln of 1 half. So does my computer or my calculator look exactly like my paper? Am I typing it in right? Yeah? OK. And I get negative 2. Nice. I don't even need a wiggly thing. I just get negative 2. Now, I know I threw some logs in there. But did the original have logs? Did the original equation have any logs in it? No. So then I don't need to check it. I'm good. Okay. Only if the original has some logs in it, you have to check those answers. Did I skip over an example? No, I did not. I just did it fast. Okay. Now let's look at number two. This one does say to solve it algebraically and then approximate your three to three decimals. So what kind is this, exponential or log? It is, no, this one's not log. Does it have a log? Oh. As long as, if it doesn't have an L, right? <laughs> for LN or for LOG. If you don't see LOG or LN, it's not a log, okay? But it is an exponential. However, we can't do anything. We still have the same two options. Well, sort of, because the base is different, right? But we still have two options. We just cannot use either one of those until the exponential is by itself, right? So this must be all alone. So what do I have to do first? Yes, divide by five, good. So then now I have this expression or equation. And then now I can do either one of these. Mine has less steps, but both work, okay? I'm gonna convert this. So then I'm gonna do log, and what is the base gonna have to be? Four. Four. And then the other two guys switch sides, right? So the nine goes here now, and the X gets kicked out. I always tell people the base stays the base and the other two guys swap, okay? Now, that I can type in the calculator, I just have to fix it first. And this one I think is going to be a decimal. So fraction ln of nine over ln of four. Um, and it said round to three decimal places. So this nine will make that four turn to a five. So we'll get this. 
Um, and there were no logs in the original, right? So we don't need to check it. We're good. We know that's going to be the answer. As long as you did everything correctly, you put it in your calculator correctly, it'll work. Okay, number four. We have not seen one like number four yet. Is number four a log or an exponential? It's a log. Now, just like the exponentials, you can't do anything until the log is completely by itself, okay? So we do have to get rid of that five. How are we gonna get rid of it? Mm -hmm. It's multiplied, right? When they're right next to each other, that means multiply. So do the opposite, which is divide. And so I get this expression and then 12 divided by five is 2.4. Now for me, because it's one log only, I'm gonna switch its form, right? However, what is the base here when there's not one written? Not E, when it's LN, it's E. But when it's just log, it's 10. It's just a 10. So I like to write it in there so that when I switch it, I know where the 10 came from magically, right? Because <laughs> when you switch it, you have to keep the same base and then these two guys switch sides. So 2.4 becomes the exponent and then X minus four comes over here. The whole argument goes over there. So I can put 10 raised, oh no, wrong button. Oh look, I have that button right there, you see it? 10 with a little exponent, I just have to press it two times. So if I push it two times, it changes it to 10, and then I can type in a 2.4. You can also do 10 exponent button and 2.4. Regardless, it'll give you the same number, okay? So this is 251.1886432. I'm not rounding yet because I don't know how adding that four is gonna affect everything. I don't think it's gonna affect it much, right? the whole number. So when I add four, I'm going to get 255.188, so on and so forth. Now, if I need to round it to three decimal places, one, two, three, this six is going to make that a nine. So my answer will be this. Now, before I box it, do I need to check it? It has logs in the original. So if I go put this number in there and I minus four, is it still gonna be positive? It will be, right? It'll just be 251 positive, right? So it will work, therefore I can box it. But just always, even if you're just mentally checking, just make sure that you check it before you box it. If you don't write out the check steps, but yet you tell me this one's a solution and the other one's not or whatever the case is, right? I'm good. But you don't check it and you enter the wrong answer, I'm gonna write on there, make sure you check, right? <laughs> because if you selected an answer that wasn't supposed to be an answer, it was obvious that you didn't check, okay? Now, this one has logs. You see the LNs, right, all over the place? But we cannot do anything with it until it's just one LN and one LN, okay? The left-hand side is ready. It's just one LN, right? But the right-hand side is not ready, okay? There's two of them. So I have to compress them together into one. So I have to use those rules. So when there's a minus in there, what happens to the two arguments? You divide them, exactly, good. So it's always gonna be the positive LN argument at the top, and then the negative LN argument goes at the bottom. But now it's just one LN, okay? Once you have that, you use the one-to-one -one property that says, well, if there's LN on that side and LN on that side, then this argument has to equal this argument, okay? Now, I usually use these arrows only when I'm starting to write this way. But if I start writing my equations downward, notice that I don't use them, right? 
it's just a choice. I, for some reason, I felt the need to put it there. <laughs> but normally I wouldn't if I'm going downward, okay? It's only when you're going across the page that you need to put little arrows. So I know where one of your equation ends and the other one starts, right? Okay, from here, this is a fraction equation now, right? So how do we solve fraction equations? Mm -hmm, by what? The denominator, right? So I'm gonna multiply both sides. I'm gonna multiply this side and I'm gonna multiply that whole side by x plus three. And notice I put this in parentheses in pink because there wasn't any, but I am multiplying the whole thing, right? By x plus three. So on the right, they cancel and I just have x minus three. And on the left-hand side, I've got to foil all of that out, right? So this guy and this guy, here we have 7x, here we have 3x, and finally we have 21, okay? What kind of equation is this? A quadratic. So then we have to get everybody over to one side. And since my x squared guy is positive over here, I want to get everybody to the left side, okay? So I'm going to minus an x, and I'm going to add a 3. That will get rid of both of the guys on the right. And then let's collect all of our like terms on the left side. So I have x squared, just that single x squared. But then I'm going to combine all of these x's. How many x's am I going to have? Mm -hmm. plus nine or minus nine plus nine so plus nine x and then what's my constant going to be plus 24 good and so then i could either factor that or i could use the quadratic formula it's your choice i do not have a problem factoring this so that's what i'm going to do it's going to be x plus six no that's not going to work eight and three nope I think I do have to use the quadratic formula. Two and 10, no, two and 12, those don't give me nine either. Yeah, this one's not so easy to factor. So I'm gonna use my quadratic formula. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C, all over two times A. What is A? I put ones, but that's because it's the coefficient of this guy, right? The A comes from that little invisible one there. Now let's go see what we get. So we get negative nine and let's see what we get in there. Um, nine squared minus four times one times 24. I get negative 15 over two. What is this? It's imaginary. And we already told you, you cannot tell if imaginary number is bigger than one or greater than one or any of that. You just can't, right? They're not even in the same family as regular real numbers, okay? So this is imaginary. And because it's an imaginary, you have no real solution, okay? So make sure that if you see that on there that you select no solution, okay? Super important. You did everything, but it just is not coming out right. Okay. So I'm glad that one popped up because I don't want that happening to you on your own and then you spending a whole hour trying to figure out where you went wrong. It can happen, okay? Having no solution can happen. Okay, that is the end of 5.4. However, especially the exponential equations, we will keep solving exponential equations in this section. Um, this one talks about the exponential models and the log models, okay? I don't remember having to do a whole bunch with the log models. Mostly we stuck with growth and uh, decay. However, it does look like they do give you some 
No, not really. Not really. Yep, it's not too bad. They kind of just mention them, but they don't make us do a whole bunch with them, okay? So we are gonna talk about exponential models, but then we're also gonna talk a little tiny bit about logarithmic models, okay? So here are like the main ideas, okay? You don't need to memorize these. I will put them on the test, but you're probably only gonna need the generic one for this, where they just give you that formula and then they tell you that it's growth if B is bigger than zero, and they tell you it's a decay if the B is less than zero, okay? So if this exponent up here is positive, then it's a growth model. But if that exponent up there is negative, then it's a decay model. Does that make sense? Okay. So if that little number up there is positive, it's growth. If it's negative, it's decay. Then you have the Gaussian um, model, which is this weird looking thing. You have the logistic growth model, which is this guy. And then you have logarithmic models, which are these guys. You've seen these guys before. Um, I think we saw this, where they had the chart, and then they took the ln of all the x's, and they took the ln of all the y's, and then they mapped it, and they made a line. And so then they told you it was going to be this, and you would have a slope. Well, this just adds a vertical shift, right? Like it's going to shift up or shift down, OK? So it's the same thing as the one we talked about before. Normally with the logistic models, they will give you um, the functions already, okay? So that's what an exponential model looks like. That's what a decay model looks like, right? Over time, as time passes, the number goes down for the growth. As the time passes, the number goes up. The Gaussian model depends on whether what direction you're going in, whether it'll go upward or downward. Um, this one here is the logistic growth model. This is not actually, um, well, yeah, it is. I was going to say it's not a function, but it is. It passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. So it's good. But it does have these asymptotes here. Um, then this one is the log model, the natural log model, and then the common log model. So it's just showing you images of what they look like. And so if your data maps out on these kinds of shapes, then that's how you know what kind of model you have. Um, it says you often gain insight into a situation modeled by an exponential or logarithmic function by identifying and interpreting the asymptotes of the graph of the function. Identify the asymptote of the graph of each function shown below um, previously. What are they talking about? Okay, so they're giving you some data, okay? And we already know that if we put this data into a table and we take the ln of both sides, you should map out like this, okay? And then if you take this, where would this um, guys, is this thing gonna shift up or down at all? I know that in a regular exponential, a regular one, just e to the x, it be this. Okay. If I have another exponent, a positive exponent, all it does is shift whether it's going this way or it's going this way. Does it go up slower? Does it go up faster? Right? That's all that that number is going to do is affect that. Okay. Then this number in here is also going to make it go up faster. Okay. So it literally will still have this sort of shape. Where does this graph have an asymptote at? It has a horizontal asymptote. Where is it at though? This is the horizontal asymptote, right? That's the line that it'll get real, real close to, but it'll never cross over, okay? So then that means that the horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero, okay? What's the equation of this line? The y value is always what? 
on here. The y value is always zero, right? So you don't have to graph it. You don't have to do all this stuff they're asking you to do. Um, but what does the equation say? It says compare the values given by the model. Da, 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 da. Oh, this is a bad problem. I'm going to just X out example one. We're going to skip example one. This is nothing like you're going to be asked to do. Oh my God, all these pages. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is good stuff. Okay. So the exponential growth and decay, it says in living organic material, the ratio of the number of radioactive carbon isotopes, which is carbon 14, to the number of non-radioactive carbon isotopes, which is called carbon 12, is about one to 10 to the 12th. That's a really huge number, okay? So apparently there's a bunch of these guys more than there are these guys, okay? It says when organic material dies, its carbon-12 content remains fixed, so this does not change. Whereas radioactive carbon-14 begins to decay with a half-life of about 5,700 year, or 5, years. So this is half-life, is 5,700 years. What is half-life? It's kind of self-explanatory, right? It's basically where you hit the peak and then it starts to decay after that. So you start growing and then you hit a peak and then you start decaying, okay? It's literally like where you're gonna hit half of the lifespan, okay? Before you have no more carbon 14. So it'll take 5,700 years just to get down to half of that carbon 14, okay? It'll take another 5,700 years for you to be at zero carbon 14, okay? So what is it saying? Um, it says to estimate the age of dead organic material, scientists use the following formula, which denotes the ratio of carbon 14 to carbon 12 present at any time T in years. And so they're giving us this formula. This is not that I had to find. They're giving it to me. They even mapped it for me, grew, uh, drew it out for us. And it says the graph of R is shown at the right. Note that R decreases as T increases. So as time goes by, notice that the value of R is just going down and down and down, right? That ratio of carbon 14 to carbon 12 is gonna go down because carbon 12 stays the same, but carbon 14 goes away, right? So that's why it's having this decaying motion here. Now, it says the value of B in the exponential decay model, this thing, determines the decay of radioactive isotopes. For instance, to find how much an initial 10 grams of this kind of isotope with a half-life of this much, so H equals this, is left after 500 years. So then that means T is 500. It says substitute this information into the model with this equation, and then they want us to solve. So notice that you have y equals. Y is what happens after the time has passed, right? Because this is half-life, shouldn't I have half of what I ended up with or what I started with, right? So half-life means I'm going to have half of what I started with. A is what you start with, which is that same guy right there. B, I don't know what it is. That's the rate that I'm trying to figure out. But I do know that the, um, the time that has gone by, this is the wrong number. It should not be that. What should the time be? Mm -hmm. The time should be 500. I don't know why they have 5,900 up there. That's not true. Oh no, that is true. The half-life is this. So that is the time that it takes to get halfway. They're just giving me, they wanna know what's happening after 500 years. So they're telling me that the half-life is this. 
So I know that that's going to have to go here because I am talking about halfway, right? But once I figure out what that B is, then I can tell them what's happening after 500 years. That's what's going on here, okay? So they want you to basically figure out what the equation is gonna look like first, and then you can tell them what's gonna happen after 500 years, okay? So I'm picking up the information that they gave me, and then I'm plugging everybody in and trying to figure out what that B should be. Once I know what that B is, this is just, oh, it looks like, they divided both sides by 10 to get rid of this 10. And if I divide both sides by 10, they cancel. And so I just have a half, you're skipping steps here. I have a half equal to this, okay? Then from there, they took the, they switched the forms over. So they applied the definition. Notice you have log base E, which is the same thing as LN. So log base E, and then the half and this B thing switch sides, right? So the half becomes over here with the, L, with the log base E, and this number gets kicked out over to the other side. Now, how do I solve for B? I'm gonna have to divide by negative 1599 on both sides. And so that's where they got this weird fraction from, okay? Now, I typically, <laughs> don't leave that like that. I actually get a decimal. So I will do fraction ln of one half, and then at the bottom, negative 159, and I'll use 0 0.00043348. I usually don't need these weird looking expressions. I just get the decimals for them. These, they waste a lot of paper too, right? You'd have to use at least like two lines to write that neatly. Okay, so what is my equation going to look like then? The equation is going to be y equals the original amount, which was 10, and then e to the negative of this decimal. And then you have the t. I can't fit it in there. <laughs> but there should be a little t in there. It's just so tiny. I got too close to the end of the paper, right? Now that I have that equation, now I can use that equation to figure out what's gonna happen after 500 years. And so then to that, you're just plugging in 500 years for the time. So you're plugging in 500 here. And then let's see what we get. So we get 10 E, now I am not gonna type in this whole thing, so I'm gonna do negative and then I'm gonna do second answer. So it can take that whole decimal I had in there previously and plug it in. Instead of me having to type it all over. Oh man, I messed up now. Dang it. I can't copy this because if I copy it, I plug that in there right there. So I screwed up. Now I have to type it. Dang it. I forgot a zero. So that's how I screwed up. And I get the same thing. This is going to make that go up. So I get 8.05 grams. Okay. I don't like this model here. I usually use this model. It's the same thing, the same exact thing, except this notation helps me remember that this is the amount at the beginning. I think the words that they use is called initial amount. Okay, that's what that little not means. It always means what's happening at the very beginning when time is zero. Okay, that's why it has a little zero there because it means what happened at the very, very beginning when time was zero. This one is what happens after however much time is passed on. Okay. Even if it's a, this one was a decay model. The only difference between a growth model is that there won't be a negative there, okay? It'll be the exact same thing, there just won't be a negative. Now, let's see, they're doing Gaussian models, but we don't really do Gaussian models. 
me confirm. I keep saying we don't do it, we don't do it, but let me go make sure that there's none in here before I just exit out. I really don't think you do have any of those because that's not something that we concentrate on. So yeah, these are all those P formulas, the A and the P thing. Ah, uh, look here, we have some. This is the exact same problem the one we did, um, except it's a thousand instead of five hundred. Yeah, none of these are the same. Do y'all mind if I do these problems instead of the problems that are in the paper? <laughs> these seem like these are way different than the ones on the paper. I don't think anything in this packet is going to be useful for the rest of the problems. So I'd be wasting my time trying to explain all this. I'm just going to cross it out. And when I post it, I am not going to put these pages in there, OK? Because all of this is irrelevant for us. We do not cover all these models. The only models we cover is those um, growth and decay. So I'm going to get some paper. I'm going to cross them all out. Um, the practice ones we can do. Yes, these are, I'm just going to do the ones on the computer. Those are more helpful. Okay, I do not have any questions. Okay, we got a little bit. So let's go grab a problem from here. Now, they're all different, so you have to really be careful, okay? I'm not gonna do every single one. I'll let you pick one between one, two, and three. Who wants to do which one? They're all the same. Number one, okay, great. So number one, we have, it says find the missing values assuming continuously compounded interest. So that word continuously compounded interest automatically means I have to use this formula, right? When it says continuously. Now I'm gonna go get the data they gave us. They told me the initial investment is a thousand. What letter is that? Is that P, R, or T? That's P, so P is a thousand dollars. And then the annual interest rate, that's pretty obvious, right? Is R for rate. So that R is 5.6%. Now, I cannot enter a percent when I plug in things in my calculator. So I do have to move this over two times in order to get the decimal that I will plug in there, okay? Now it says they want two answers. They want the doubling time and then they want what happens after 10 years. So for time to double, let me go back over here. How much will the A be if I double? Because remember, A is your balance. So what will the balance be after it's doubled? Mm -hmm. What times two? The principal times two. So it'll be two times P, which is a thousand in this case, right? So we actually get 2,000. So when I take this formula here, the A is going to be 2,000 because that's double what we put in, right? And then my rate is this number, and the time is what I'm trying to figure out, right? And so what kind of equation is it? It's exponential, right? And for exponentials, we have two steps, is to get the exponential by itself and then switch it over to a log, okay? So first I'm gonna divide by a thousand and I get two. And then I'm gonna switch it over to its log form. So it's gonna be log base E, cause it's the base. And then these two guys swap. So the two is gonna be with the E now. And then that exponent is gonna be all by itself.
the eaves here now. That base becomes the log base. But you never write L, I mean, sorry, you never write log E, right? In your calculator, it doesn't have log E. It has this. But this is the same thing as that, okay? So I can type that in my calculator, but before I do, I actually need to figure out what T is by itself, right? So I'm gonna divide by this number in the front. And then I can put it in my calculator. So fraction ln of two over 0 0.056. And does it tell me to round to a certain number? I can't remember. Round to two decimal places. So then that seven will change the seven. And so that's what you would type in for that first um, box, right? The second box says after 10 years. So for this one, I'm not plugging in anything for A because 10 years means that T is equal to 10, right? So I'm gonna take that same formula and I don't know what the balance is gonna be after 10 years. That's what I'm trying to figure out, right? What is the balance gonna be? So don't plug in a number for your balance. Just plug in your principal, your investment, your rate, and then this time. And this one is all numbers. Aren't these all numbers? Even this guy is a number, right? It's 2.78, whatever it was, right? It's a number. So you can plug that whole thing in your calculator. 1000 E. 0 0.056 parentheses 10. And it looks exactly like it does on your paper, so you know you're good. And two decimal places means I get 67 cents, right? So this one's money. Is it your balance, right? That's your money. The other one was years. Because time is in years. Now, so that's good. That's a good one. Now here, this one's a little bit different. Um, I'm not gonna solve it, but I'll help you set it up, okay? So number two is the initial investment. So that's P is 800. And then it tells you after 10 years, so when T is 10 years, A is 1,000 and five dollars okay so that's what i have right there p equals 800 and then when t is 10 years the balance is 1005 okay and it did say continuously so because it says a continuously i know we have this formula but there were two unknowns what the heck were the two unknowns the rate and then the double time so I have to figure out the rate first before I can figure out the double time. So let's do the rate first. I'm gonna plug in what I know, and then I'm gonna find that rate. So I know that the balance at time, at when 10, T is 10. So I know that this is 1005, P is 800, R don't know, and then I get 10. And I actually probably need to solve this one. Should, excuse me. So how do I solve this? This is an exponential and you have to isolate it, right? You have to get rid of that 800. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 800. And you can write R times 10 or you can just write 10 R, it's the same thing. Let's see if this is a nice number or a really ugly decimal. That's eh, not too bad. Once you isolate that exponential though, what do you have to do with it? Change it over to a log. So it's gonna be log with what base? E. And then instead of 10 R being on the same side as the E, this guy is, right? They're gonna swap. So now this number is with the E and the 10 R is no longer with the E. It's over there by itself. 
Now I can type that number in my calculator, so it's not too big of a deal. But before I do, let's get R all alone. So how do I solve for R here? Divide by 10. So we get R is approximately, who knows what, ln of 1.25625 over 10. And we get this. I didn't read the instructions on how to round this, so let me go check it real quick. Um, it says round to two decimal places. However, look at this. You see that little symbol right there? That means they don't want the decimal. They want the percentage. But what I have on my paper is a decimal, right? So we have to change this to a percentage before we can round it. Okay, so I'm gonna go two times this way and I get 2.2813 dot, dot, dot percentage. And then if I'm only gonna round to two decimal places, is that one gonna change that eight? No, so my rate is going to be 2.28%, okay? Make sure you change it to a, to a percentage first before you round it. Because if I round it here, it's just going to look like 2%, right? And that's not the good, that's not going to give you the correct answer. So make sure you convert first and then round. But there was a second part to this one, actually. Then I wanted to know the double time. Okay. Well, you cannot do the double time. The time has to be the only unknown if you're doing double time. Okay. So when I go to plug in this formula, the only unknown I should have is that guy right there, which means I have to plug in numbers for the P, the A, and the R, okay? The P is easy, I know that's 800. The A, if I'm doubling my money, what should the A be? Two times what I put in, right? And didn't we just figure out what R was, right? Well, we can't put in a des we can't put in a per uh, percentage. We have to put in a decimal, so it would be 0 0.0228. And then there's my little T. Now it is an exponential, so I have to get this piece all by itself. That exponential part has to be alone. So I am going to divide by 800 on both sides. Those 800s will just cancel away, won't they? And then if I switch it, it's going to be log with what base? Base E still. And then these guys swap. So instead of the T, this decimal T over here with the E, the 2 is going to be with the E. And then now the decimal T is going to be by itself. I can change this the way it looks. It's the same thing. It's just changing the way it looks. But by definition, those are the same. And then divide by that decimal. So I get T will be approximately, I don't know. Let me do it in here over 0 0.0228 and I get 30.40 and it's time so this should be years. I won't do the third one but I want to get to one of the other ones that was different. Could probably get to do like Four, four more of these puppies. So we won't do that one. That one's compounded continuously. They're all continuously. So just make sure you plug everything in and then do one at a time. Um, make sure for number four that you find the rate first and then you can find this. For number three, make sure you find the initial investment first and then you can do the double time, okay? Same thing here, find the initial, I don't know, that one. 
Ugh, I might have to do that one, number five. So still continuously compounded. So I'm still gonna write down that same formula. But initial investment, I don't know. Rate, I don't know. I know time to double is six years. And I know that the amount equals 1900 when T is equal to 10. Ooh, they're gonna create like a whole system for me. Okay, this one is a good one, actually. I need to figure out the investment, right? And the rate, is that what it was? Yeah, investment and rate. This is literally a system of equations problem. Okay, so I'm gonna use this information to come up with one equation, and then I'm gonna use the other box of information to come up with a second equation. Okay, and somehow I have to put them two together to solve for both of the variables. Okay, so for the first one, A, let's see, double time. Double time means that the amount, my balance, will be twice what I put in, right? And I know how long it takes to do that. It takes six years for it to be double. Okay, so if I take this exponential thing and I divide both sides by that P, not only am I isolating the variable, but I'm also simplifying that other side, right? I'm gonna convert this over into its log form. So log base E of two equal to six R. I'm gonna write LN instead of log E, and then I'm gonna divide by six. What is that? Uh, fraction, LN of two over six. Did it tell me to round? I think it says round to two decimal places. Yep. So I'm going to change this to a percent first, and then I will change it into a decimal or round it. And so then R is approximately 11.55%. Okay. So that's the first thing I found, which was the R and not the P. Let's go see if we can figure out the P. I'm going to go back over here. And I need to figure out P. If I'm trying to figure out P, P should be the only unknown then, right? So I should be plugging in numbers for everybody else except the P. Now I do know the amount after the 10 years is going to be 1900. I don't know the P. I do know that the time is going to be that 10 years and the rate. I know that now, right? Didn't we just find it? So we're going to use the decimal representation though. So use 0.1155. Always make sure you use the decimal portion when you plug it in the formula. When you're giving it as an answer, you have to give the percentage, okay? Well, this is not much. Actually, it might look like an exponential, but it's not, because this is just a number. That is not an exponential expression. There's no variable in there at all, right? So you basically have P times some number. What number? Let's go check it out. E to the 0.1155 times 10. What is that number? It's this number. I cannot fit it in there. Can I fit it in there? Yeah, time. <laughs> it says 418, it's like super tiny. Okay, and then what do you do if you have P times a number and you wanna know what P is? You just divide by it. So I'm gonna divide by this number. And the same on this side. Now on the paper, I have to write it all out, but on the computer and a calculator, I'm just gonna hit 1900 or 1900 correctly. And then I'm gonna divide by my answer. Since I have that right there, I just hit second and the negative symbol and it says answer right there. So it'll divide by that last response. That way I'm not rounding. 
if I have to round to the nearest penny, that's going to be 61 cents, right? So this is my initial investment would have to be. So that one we hadn't seen before. That was good, especially this part when there's no letters up in here, right? We always had T or R or somebody up in there or X, but this one didn't have any variables in there. That one's pretty much the same thing, except it's a different formula because it says not continuously, right? It says monthly. So you have to use that other formula. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to say for number six, you have to use this formula. And this is a number one. And because it says monthly, the N is equal to what? 12. There's 12 months in a whole year, right? You could plug in the other numbers and then solve for the unknown. Who's the unknown? P is the unknown. So that's great. It's just like the last problem. You're going to plug in all these numbers and then just figure out what this number is and then divide both sides by it, right? Just like we did in the last problem. Okay, here's the good ones. Number seven. I want to do at least two of these. So number seven, it tells me what kind of isotope that is. I don't need that in my formula. I do need to know half-life is uh, 1599. And I'm writing something down. And then the initial quantity is 10 grams. And then it wants me to find the amount after 10 years. Okay, so let me write down what I wrote. Half-life is 15.99 and initial quantity is 10 grams. So it's this, okay? Now I wrote this information in here because I did not clarify that earlier. Half-life being 15.99 means that the Y, the amount afterward, will equal twice the amount you put in when T, the time, is 15.99 years, right? That's what it means, okay? And then the initial amount being 10 grams means that the Y naught is 10 grams. So what formula am I using? I'm using the growth and decay model. This is the growth and decay model. They don't use A, they use Y. It's the same thing as the other one. It's like literally A equals P E to the RT, isn't it? It's the same formula. It's just they change the P to Y naught what you started with, and then the A to a regular Y. This is literally all they did, okay? And I think they used a B here before, but it really doesn't matter. I can use R, it's the rate of decay or the rate of growth. Now, I won't know if it's decay or growth until after I've figured out what R is, because if R is positive, it's growth, right? If R is negative, then I know it's decay, okay? So let's see what we get here. Um, it says that the Y will be twice the initial amount when we're talking about half-life. So that means after some time, this number here will be twice, not even twice, it'll be half of what I put in. So this should be half of what you put in. I don't know what I put in. I don't know the rate, but I do know that I get half of what I put in after 1599 years. And that's okay that I don't know the why not because in order to solve for R, aren't I gonna have to divide by that why not? So it really doesn't matter what it is. I'm gonna get one half equal to E to this exponent. I'm gonna use the log form. So log base E and these guys swap. So now the one half is over here with the E and the 1599 is all by itself instead of the way it was before, right? The one half was by itself. 
So this is ln of 0 0.5. And then I'm just going to divide by 1599. And so that we figure R is ln of 0.5. Oops, if I turn it on. We get negative 0 0.0004334888. It's almost, as, it's the same problem as the other one. That's why we're getting the same answer. Now it's negative, right? So that negative is why it is a decay model. If it were a positive rate, then it would be a growth model, okay? Did it want the rate? It did not want the rate. It just wanted to know the amount after 10 years. So if I know the rate, then I can write the equation. The equation will be this, negative 0 0.00043348. Do I know the initial amount? Didn't they tell me that? If I look over here, didn't they tell me the initial quantity, right? They told me it was 10. So I know that this initial amount is 10. And if I want to find the amount after 10 years, what am I going to do? Where's the 10 years going to go? Is it going to go here or is it going to go there? It's going to go up there for T, right? Isn't T the time, the years? So I'm going to plug in that 10. Is it 10? Yes, it's 10. And I do not need to switch this because this is all numbers, all numbers. So I can just type it in, negative 0.00043348 times 10. And I get about 9.96 years. Normally they'll ask you to round to the nearest year. So it's about 10 years, right? Oh, did I do it wrong? I did it wrong. Yes, I did. It says after a thousand years, doesn't it? <laughs> that is why, because <laughs> I did it wrong. You're right, it should be 10,000 years. So let's go back in here, because that's probably not right then, right? I'm just gonna change this guy to 10 or to a thousand. There we go. Oh, and it's not years, it's why. Why is not years? Why is the amount afterward? Um, the two is not gonna change the eight, so it will stay this. So what is it? I think it's grams, was it not? I can't remember what measurement they used. Yes. Why not was in grams. This guy was in grams, which means that guy's also in grams. And that makes, right after 10 years, it was nine point something grams, right? And then after a thousand years, it was only six point something grams, which makes sense because this thing is decaying, right? We have a negative rate, so it's decaying. Okay, so that's that one. There's another one. Dun, dun, dun. This one's asking you to find the initial amount. I won't find it, but I hope you set it up. So it says H equals 5715. Um, the Y naught is the one I don't know. And then it tells me that Y equals nine grams after a thousand years. Okay, so I wrote everything down. I wrote the half-life is 5715. I don't know what the initial quantity is. But I do know that the amount Y is going to be nine grams after a thousand years. That was what this last box told us. Okay. Remember what this box tells us. It tells us that Y is half the initial amount. Okay. When the time is 5715. So I'm going to have two different things to do here. Okay. And hopefully together it will give me everything I need. 
So first is to set up the equation for this piece of information, okay? So remember what the general formula looks like, okay? That's the general formula. And I'm gonna plug in all the numbers I got. So half-life means this will be one half times the original amount. I still don't know the original amount, but I know that that happens at 5,715 years. To get this exponential part by itself, I will have to divide by that initial amount anyway. And so I'll get 0 0.5 or one half equal to the E to this exponent, okay? Once you're done solving this, you're gonna get R equal to some number, right? A decimal number, okay? You don't have to fill that in the box. So leave it alone, just keep it as a decimal. However, you are gonna have to take this information and this information to get the answer, actual answer, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my formula and I'm gonna plug in that Y after a thousand years is nine grams. I do not know what the original amount is. Whatever that rate is that I get, and the time is that thousand years, okay? Remember, you're gonna have a number there. So this entire thing is just going to be some number, right? And then how do you figure out what the initial amount is? You just divide both sides by whatever that number is, right? And then you'll know what the initial amount is. I should put like little, yay, this is my final answer, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna do it all. I want you to be able to solve all that and go from there. We've done it a few times now, so you should be able to. Okay, so those are all those box problems. These are nicer because they already give you the formula. Notice they already gave you what the initial amount is, right? Um, and then they're telling you that the website's third month, there were this many hits so you know how many hits there are right y is the number of hits and then t is the number of months so what are you going to plug in for t three because it said by the third month right so you plug in three for t you plug in the ten thousand for y and then you solve that for the k once you know the k you can plug it in here so that you have your whole new function with the correct K, the correct rate. Once you have that function, then you can do part two. And part two says, use the value K to predict the number of hits that you'll receive after 21 months. So if you already know what K is from the first part, what number are you plugging in, Y or T? T is the months, right? So you're gonna plug in 21 for T and then all you do is type that whole thing in your calculator, okay? Let's see, this one is a good one, number 10. I'm actually gonna do that one. It says the number of bacteria in a culture is increasing according to the law of exponential growth, which means that same Y equals Y naught E to the RT. Um, after two hours, so after two hours, um, there was 200 bacteria. After four hours, there were 800 bacteria. It says, how many bacteria will there be after six hours? Okay, so there's, the regular bottle for growth, okay? There's the two bits of information they gave me. And then they're asking me how many bacteria there's gonna be, right, after six hours. If I am trying to figure out how many bacteria there should be after six hours, T is what I'm plugging in, and T should be the only thing that I need to plug in, okay? Everybody else should already have a number, okay? So that means I do need to figure out what this is, and I do need to figure out what this is before I can go plug in that six hours, okay? So let's take the two pieces of information they gave us and see if we can figure out what both of those numbers are, okay? 
So after two hours, um, that means the time is gonna be two. And then after four hours, that means the time is gonna be four. I know that after two hours, I'm gonna have 200 bacteria, but I don't know what I started with and I don't know that rate. And I know over here, I'm gonna have 800 bacteria, but I don't know what I started with and I don't know that rate. So these two formulas, these two equations. You have two equations. It's a system of equations. How in the world would I solve for systems of equations? I can use substitution. I knew there was a system in here somewhere. I thought it was the other one, but it wasn't. Use substitution. So how do you do use substitution? You have to take one equation and solve for one of the letters. Either solve for Y naught or solve for R. It's easier to solve for Y naught. So I'm gonna take this. And if I wanna get this guy by himself, I have to divide both sides by E to the two R. So then I get this fraction equals the y naught by itself, right? Now I have to actually substitute, okay? So I'm going to substitute this value into the other equation. Don't put it back into itself. Everything's just going to cancel out, okay? Make sure you put, you work with one and then substitute it into the other one, okay? So this other one will become 800 and then this fraction e to the 4r. Seeing that so far? Okay, now here's the cool thing. When you have an exponential divided by an exponential, you have to subtract those exponents. That's the, the rule for, for exponents, right? If you have x to the m over x to the n, as long as these bases are the same, you're just subtracting those exponents, right? Isn't that the old rule? We used to do it with like x cubed and x squared, right? Now we're doing it with different bases and different exponents, okay? But you still have a base with an exponent and a same base with another exponent. So top exponent minus bottom exponent, which means now you have this equation to solve. But it's okay because now there's just one letter right? There's not two letters in there anymore, okay? You can never solve an equation when there's two unknowns, okay? Which is why I could not solve this by itself, and I could not solve this one by itself. There are too many unknowns. So I'm going to get this exponential guy by himself. I'm going to convert it over to the log form. So then I'm running out of space over here. I can try to squeeze it in there. If I divide both sides by two, I get that R equals ln of four over two. And that decimal is probably gonna be a really long one and I'm not gonna be able to fit it in there. But let's go check. Yeah, I knew it. 0 0.693, blah, 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 okay? I'll write it on the next page. Because now that I have found the R, now I have to go back and back sub, okay? So remember, I took this expression and plugged it in there, right? To figure out that R. Once you have that R, plug it back in here so you can figure out what the Y naught is, right? So I'm gonna plug that R right here so that I can calculate what the initial value is. Okay, so this R guy, I'm gonna try to draw an arrow, is gonna go right into there, okay? So then I get 200 over E to the two times that decimal, and I'm gonna use the actual decimal I had in my calculator, instead of chopping it off. And so I have 200 over I'm not even gonna bother. I'm just gonna type that in my calculator. It's all numbers, right? 
So fraction 200 over E to the two times, and I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna do second answer. Oh, wow, don't even need the weighties. It came out to exactly 50. So I know the initial quantity. Is 50 bacteria. The other y values were bacteria, right? That's why I called this one bacteria. Okay, that's fantastic and all. So we have those two numbers now. So if I go back to my equation, remember I said you needed to know this number and you needed to know that number. You can't see me. But I wrote down this equation. I told y'all y'all needed to know those two numbers, right? Don't we know those two numbers now? So I wrote down the same equation over here and I just literally wrote the same thing. Now I'm gonna plug in what those numbers are. So I know this is 50 and I know this is 0 0.69314781. Now, all that work I did is a lot of work. <laughs> now I can finally answer their question, right? They wanted to know how many bacteria there were after six hours. So all that work just to figure out what the equation's gonna look like so that I can plug in those six hours. And I'm gonna plug in the six right there. And this is all numbers, so I can put it in the calculator just like that. Um, I'm going to go highlight the big number because I don't want to type it in there and then press six. And I get Y. I'm just going to say equals 32, right? Because it's like zero, 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 zero. It's pretty much 3,200 bacteria. And this is what they were asking you for. You just had to figure out what the R and the initial were before you could find it. Okay. That's the big one. That's the one that I knew. I knew there was one in there. <laughs> I just had to find it. Okay. So the last two problems, those are like the easiest ones out of all of them. It's so funny. But they give them to you last, like they're the hardest. Okay. So I need to know this formula. Um, pH equals negative log H plus. And I can do both number 11 and 12. So for the bottom one, for number 11, it says find pH when that H plus guy is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the negative five. So I wrote down the formula, right? This is the formula they gave me. And they're telling me that this is this number. So if I'm asked to calculate pH, I'm literally just typing this in the box. Oops, that's supposed to be a times. And that's not complicated to plug in. I have this button in my calculator without the little thing. It's a common log. I can type negative log and then 1.1 times 10 raised to the negative five. And then just close that parentheses. It's exactly like it is on my paper, right? And I get 4.9586, so on and so forth. I think it tells you to round to two decimal places. So in that case, mine would be 4.99, okay? Now number 12 is backwards. Number 12, they give you the pH. See how they tell you pH is equal to 5.3? And they want you to find the hydronium concentration level, but it has to be in scientific notation, so be careful, okay? I'm gonna plug the pH into this formula and I'm gonna try to figure out what this weird thing is. So the first thing I have to do is get the log by itself. So I do have to divide by an invisible negative one so that the log is all by itself. And then I have to convert this. So you know that when it's just log all by itself, there's really a base 10, right? And so then if I change it to exponential form, it'll be 10, and the H is not gonna be with a 10 anymore. Then negative 5.3 will be with the 10. And then the H plus will be by itself. And if I type that in there, 10 raised to the negative 
it gives me this weird decimal. One, two, three, four, five. And you just have to remember how to put that in um, scientific notation. You got to go one, two, three, four, five, six spots before you get to the first non zero number. And how many times did I move? Six, right? So it'll be six, but a negative exponent. You use a positive exponent when this number is huge, like a billion or a trillion, like a huge, huge number. But when it's a tiny, tiny decimal, always use a negative exponent, okay? That makes the number tiny, tiny, okay? And that's what they're gonna ask you for inside that box. They want this number in one box and then they want this number in another box, okay? I think your calculator does it for you too. If I go to mode and I go right here, instead of normal, go to science. Let me quit and then highlight that and hit enter. And it tells you, it tells you the number that goes here and then it tells you the exponent is gonna be negative six. The only thing about using the calculator is you have to remember to go to your mode and put it back in normal, okay? Before you keep going. Otherwise, all your answers are gonna be <laughs> in scientific notation, okay? But we're done. I think I already went over time a little bit. I'm sorry, like one minute. <laughs> so anybody have any questions? If you get stuck on these, you can text me, okay? Just send me a photo of the problem so I know what your numbers are, and then I can help you, okay?